Morning world, nine o'clock in the morning on the 2nd of January 2014. And that was the new moon yesterday. It, the effect, influences are still going on. The sun has now passed Pluto, as has the moon, obviously. And the sun has passed the square to Uranus. Mars has passed the square to Pluto and the opposition to Uranus, at least for the first time. This is the first of three of its retrograde phases. All that is remaining now of this current configuration is for the sun in the sky to square Mars in the sky. And this will happen at some stage in the next 24 hours. So it's still ongoing. And a few of you, some of you, in fact, many of you perhaps are finding at the day by day life that there's still this sense of anticipation and edginess. As if there's some type of imminence. It is trepidation more than anticipation. And yet, I find myself both relieved and surprised that so little has transpired in the last four days, five days, globally, whether economically, militarily, politically, whatever. And it's not exactly a mere culpa, but it does seem as if most of the forecasts I made for this period of time and my deepest fears have not been realised so far. Because A, this is a short-term process and uh, we're in the mix at the moment. And I find myself looking back now at the forecast that I made for this time over the last six months. I've made quite a few, or a few videos on it, and I find myself reviewing them and thinking, well, the one thing that's consistent there and the one thing that I'm seeing consistent in other people's charts as well is that this period lasts from about December 28th through to January 5th. We're still in it. But also, this is like the seed opening, the shoots growing. This is the initiation. The, the if you like, the more, um, but the less intense, no, wrong, the less brief, shall we say, Perhaps not so much finale, but hardcore surgery of this will be this middle 10 days of April. I'm not going to go on too much about this yet. I'll wait another month. I don't want to be seen as shunting the goalposts further on down the road. But for any of you with astrological software or an ephemeris, just look at the patterns made between Uranus, Pluto, Jupiter, and Mars in the middle 10 days of May, uh, middle 10 days of April this year, 2014. And draw your own conclusions. The eclipsed moon in Scorpio at the same time will be interesting. But now, now it seems like we're, we're sort of coming out of this phase of going, well, what's happened then? What's actually different? What's changed? We're in a new year. There's a new energy. What's the planet saying? And I'm thinking, well, Mars is kicking. Jupiter's going retrograde. Mercury and Venus aren't doing a great deal at the moment. The sense of imminence and trepidation that I referred to earlier seems to still be there astrologically. And if it is not realised in the next 24 to 48 hours, then it will get shunted further on down the road and that will create an even bigger X or M plosion in the coming months, particularly mid-April. Now, there is one classic example, unfortunately, of recent times. And here I look at the horoscope of Michael Schumacher. Um, obviously, he didn't use astrologers because they would have advised him not to do this. But he was born with the sun at 12 Capricorn and the moon at 11, 10, 11 Cancer. He was born on a full moon. And in the last three or four days, the sun has been on his sun. It's been his birthday. It's now uh, Mars's, Uranus and Pluto have been hammering his sun moon. And he's born with 29 degrees of Taurus, the Pleiades on the ascendant. Never seen as a bubbly, fortunate position. So I wish him well. I wish him well, but that is one, it, it, it's, it's um, just representative, perhaps. I'm not suggesting that what's happened to Michael Schumacher is down to the influence of the planets and the stars. It's simply that the position of the planets and the stars at this time 
in the sky relate directly and very powerfully indeed to the positions they were in at his time of his birth. And that, to me, from an astrological perspective, is, is statistically interesting. As of the rest of today, well, for the rest of today, I'm not even, where's the moon now? The moon now, as I speak, still at the end of Capricorn, approaching Venus in the next couple of hours. Then it's going to be void for the rest of the day. So I'm not saying what I say is a major day today. Might be a bit of tetchiness, but, but not too bad. Now we're dealing over the coming two or three days. The next big thing over the coming few days now, it will be the sun opposite Jupiter and Mars squaring Jupiter. So with Mercury opposite Jupiter today, tomorrow, the next day is a kind of advanced guard of this. The emphasis is now going to switch in the coming two or three days to that of Jupiterian excess largesse, over-the-top actions. And that will be interesting to see what happens when the moon hits Uranus in about five or six days' time. Till then, back to normal now, 2014. Catch you tomorrow. Bye.